What's going on guys? It's OmniArc and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be going over the Heroic Anthem update coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms. Honestly, guys, I love these patch note videos because I think getting excited for what's to come in the game is what keeps the game fresh and exciting. And, you know, you have to have something to look forward to and some cool optimizations and changes to keep the to keep things fresh. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I like to do the commander leaked videos. If you didn't see, they did leak the um, the infantry legendaries coming soon. Check out that video I just posted. But in this video, we're going to be going over this update that's coming and I'm really excited for a lot of the stuff in there. Okay. So first of all, update 1.0.39 is called heroic Anthem. Uh, it should be coming around 10, 12. So that's about two weeks from now. Um, and we can skip a lot of this stuff here, but basically the first point, uh, is that the lost kingdom heroic Anthem will be coming soon and will go live in a few kingdoms within two weeks after the update. So we're less than a month away from some kingdoms seeing this brand new lost kingdom, this brand new case. BK. And essentially what this is, uh, is for kingdoms that have been through the first two seasons of lost kingdom, as well as light and darkness will enter an even bigger and more challenging season of conquest. So apparently this is going to be a bigger KVK than previous KVKs. So how many kingdoms are going to be involved? I don't know. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, but it says in the heroic Anthem story, governors will experience brand new camp battles and skill synergy. So one, uh, different kingdoms can unite to form a camp joining together to face the strongest enemies. So when they say the strongest enemies, I don't know if they just mean different camps fighting each other, or if you're going to have to come together just to take down some of the PVE content, because right now it's pretty easy for you got for most alliances to, you know, rally the passes and, and, you know, do the lost temple and all that stuff. Right. Um, potentially the strongest enemies here could be like even more powerful PVE content that you would have to like team up with multiple kingdoms just to take down. That would be cool. Like um, some massive raid battle. I've talked about this in the past and this is something that I want to come to the game. Really big raid battle type uh, content would be awesome. So uh, hopefully that happens. If not, they could just mean, you know, fighting other strong players, which is cool too. Uh, the next point says coalition combat alliances of the same camp can join together to form coalitions, bring the fighting and coordination up a whole level from a single alliance so i don't know how this is going to work but i'm wondering if you know if you're in the same camp as other kingdoms potentially you can form a coalition and maybe that coalition can build flags and so maybe you can rally flags and reinforce flags um even of even if you're playing with players who aren't in the same kingdom and alliance as you, I hope you guys are following what I'm saying there. Uh, but it's, it's almost uh, the way I'm thinking of this is as maybe it's a temporary alliance sort of feature that you kind of create. And as long as you're part of this coalition, you can join flags that belong, belong to that coalition. That's kind of how I'm, I'm reading this and interpreting this. I obviously have no idea. We don't know what this is going to be until it comes out, but that's what I'm understanding from this. Uh, the next point says skill synergies. This one blew my mind a little bit. Troops can equip extra commanders skills for a new level of skill synergy potential, put the right skills together and the result results will astound you. So you can apparently have commander skills as part of an army that that commander is not in. I don't understand how that works. I wonder it, how this is going to play out, but that sounds really interesting. This is going to just break down the barriers of like combinations that you can do with commanders because you won't be just limited to those two commanders. I think this is going to be really interesting. And obviously this is probably going to only be a part of this KBK, um, but still really cool. Uh, and then four, it says returning heroic souls, a set portion of your units killed in battle during this season will be brought back to life, ready to continue following you on your adventure. This Lilith. Yes, dude. Yes, this is what we wanted. Now, granted, we don't know what that set portion is. It could be 10%. It could be 50%. I don't know what this set portion is going to be. But regardless, it's really good to know that we're going to be getting some of our units back 
from fighting during kvk at least in this season and the reason that's good is because if you're a player who is contributing a ton in kvk uh, you're gonna get a lot of those troops back but also if you're offline and you get zeroed then you can get some of those troops back which just it, it keeps players engaged in the game uh because you know if you run out of troops people get really disheartened and they don't really want to keep fighting or whatever the case is this keeps them in the game this keeps them excited and fighting and also uh it gives people a reason to actually fight right a lot of free-to-play players uh especially because it's, it's hard for them to train as many troops as these whales do um you know it, it's it's disheartening to run out of troops and you feel like you have to hold on to them because you've worked so hard to build up all these troops and in you know three hours of fighting they could all be dead and you could have a full hospital uh this will kind of help out and alleviate that problem again we don't know by how much hopefully this is a reasonable portion i would like to say i would like to see um uh, at least 30 percent of troops a turn uh i would be i would hope for about 50 percent but again any amount is good so it is what it is so that's it for the new kvk i'm excited to see how this goes this is obviously probably going to roll out to the new to the older kingdoms first but i don't actually know if it's a month away then maybe not but regardless uh this says protect the supplies event optimizations they adjusted where the caravan and raiders spawn they also made things more difficult and they added limits for event load and participation so cool they're making that event better i don't really like this event regardless so whatever it is what it is uh, and then three other optimizations so in the lost kingdom governor will no longer be able to use the alliance skill nature's gift thank you dude yes this is this was long overdue nature's gift basically if you guys don't know what this does it's an alliance skill and you basically can use this alliance technology right this is what it is to spawn 15 resource points anywhere on the map and the only players that can farm those resource points are from the alliance that spawned them initially which means that you can spawn them on enemy territory they can't build as many flags they can't port into places and they can't even go into those resource nodes to get rid of them manually so it was a really dirty stupid tactic and you know it's creative it was cute for the first kvk right it's like oh cool like they thought of a cool like way to go around this or whatever they found a cool way to use this uh this this skill but obviously that's not how the devs intended it to work so i'm glad that this will no longer be just a headache right because it was you had to plan for this which is just stupid right you shouldn't have to plan for something like that now the next one says during the light and darkness season while the map may display multiple ancient runes and altars of darkness governors can only send troops to enter one at a time this is a cool optimization i think this is going to help light versus darkness it is what it is the next one says after stage one of class past glory ends the buff kingdoms received of 15 percent attack defense and health has been changed to 50 percent increased attack so this is really interesting this change actually makes the attack stat even worse than it was before at least in kvk um and that also kind of goes in hand in hand defense and health are theoretically buffed by this change i think the reason that they did this was they wanted to make rallies uh and those big fights go quicker um because honestly you could be defending passes and flags for ages and it costs a lot of troops and resources and it just takes a lot of time and it makes it so that way like in order to effectively fight in kvk you have to like call up your job and be like hey i need the next 10 days off because the passes are opening like it, it it's just some of the battles got ridiculous right and so i think that what this is going to do is it's going to make some of those battles a little bit shorter uh, we'll have to see how this goes but really this is a, a pretty huge nerf to attack uh attack the value of attack stats on commanders and equipment uh, and as also the attack item right that you can use the attack buff um so all that stuff is pretty much nerfed with this during kvk but regardless i'm excited to see how that goes i think a lot of players won't even really notice that difference it's just going to be for those big rally fights the next one says we added an alliance reclaim function to the alliance shop allowing governors to exchange their unwanted items for individual credits this is the best single thing in this entire update i said it i said it this is the best this sentence right here is better than everything else in this massive paragraph and you want to know why 
uh, because this is going to make it so all of the items that you see in here that are absolutely useless i have 843 of these i have 459 of these i have 205 percent attack items that just got heavily nerfed for kvk like i don't need any of this stuff it's taking up a ton of space 400 of these you know almost 500 of these 500 of these 200 like it's crazy how many boosts i have that i don't need i wonder if i can exchange these lohar longbows like i want to get rid of all this stuff that i that i just do not need look at the 2600 books i have 16,000 arrows of resistance i don't need any of this stuff okay i want to get rid of it obviously i'm going to keep some cool stuff like the ghost candy on top of that i have 817 ethel fled sculptures that i got to get rid of and they don't specify in this uh in this oh give me a firework they don't specify what you can kind of exchange for individual credits uh it could be the case that you can only exchange things that can normally be found in the alliance shop but it doesn't say that here it just says unwanted items for individual credits so my thought process is that if it's an item in your inventory it'll probably have some associated individual credit price that you can exchange it for right that's how i'm seeing this and the reason that i believe that you're gonna be able to exchange ethel fled sculptures is because and i want to draw your attention to this because this is important back in july on the official rise of kingdoms discord there was a dev feedback section uh, that was updated by cheesecake himself and one of the questions that he answered was there are a lot of redundant items like arrows covenant books stars etc which can never be used give any quest to utilize them or to exchange them the official dev response was thank you for the suggestion we are currently considering implementing a way to exchange redundant items this could be through a special item shop where governors can exchange slash recycle certain items parentheses this might include ethel flood sculptures stay tuned for future updates so this dev response here is literally this fourth bullet point here so they told us in july that they were going to add a way to get rid of the redundant items like books arrows stars etc and here it is this is what they came up with and they mentioned ethel flood sculptures in that dev post now they said maybe right so it might not but if you go through this dev post they pretty much answered every single other one of these and it's already been fixed and implemented into the game besides like revamping old commanders and adding more civilizations um pretty much everything else in here they've sort of addressed or have planned on the way uh, and so it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility to be able to exchange ethel fled in this particular way which i think is really interesting because they also mentioned stars in that as well uh in the stars po portion of that dev feedback was not a maybe the ethel flood was a maybe everything else in there was books arrows stars those were things that they were just suggesting right stars are not something you can get from the alliance shop so if you can exchange stars it's going to be my assumption that there's going to be plenty of other items that you'll be able to exchange for some form of individual credits now i have 3.5 million i'm just saving up here i'm basically waiting for them to drop a new civilization so i can buy this for 2 million and then switch civs hopefully they don't rework the prices of these like if they shoot the price up for the civ change i'll be tight but yeah when this update comes everybody's gonna be flooding this alliance shop basically trading all of their alliance credits for three hours speed ups and for teleports and all this crazy stuff i'm so excited that they're doing this there are so many useless cluttered items in my dang inventory and please lord give me something to do with these ethel flood sculptures because my god i cannot handle it now of course hopefully the exchange rate for these items is good it could be the case that the exchange rate is trash and then this isn't actually that great of an update but i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt i'm hoping that this is good anything for free is better right it's it just is the next one says alliance credit costs and difficulty have been reduced for some levels of the silk road event whatever the Siroli crisis event has uh a new general Horgny ready and waiting for governors to challenge so we've been seeing that this final Siroli crisis boss has been kind of behind a black curtain uh for months and months and months now so it's cool that we're gonna finally see what that is uh bullet seven says the display for the peerless scholar has been optimized 
whatever the next one says we added a hide own news in newspaper function so this is for your privacy if you care about that we added an unoccupied territory marketing no one cares about that idea the quick forge function can now count and use material crates and material choice chests cool oh actually that is really cool i kind of breezed over that but yeah that is that's cool you won't have to like open them up and select 30 of the one thing and then it hit accept that's cool i like that next it says we optimize the display for equipment blueprint choice chests and commander sculpture chests governors can now see how many they already have of each choice okay uh we added a more convenient help access governors can now tap on their city walls guard patrol to go to the customer service page i don't know who was asking for that but hopefully that's good sure we optimized the marching troops emoji and quick chat systems governors can now send all unlocked emojis and quick chat sentences while on your march that's cool because at the time you can only you can only pick like six of the emojis that you have and like they've released so many now that i have a million just stacked up there so i'm cool i'm glad that you could do this 14 says we have removed the kingdom wide immigration message function governors will no longer receive a message every time a new governor immigrates to their kingdom this is interesting i feel like I feel like you should be notified if somebody over 25 million power joins your kingdom because that's exciting, right? But a message for every player, eh, I don't know. I don't really care about every, and the reason I don't care about every player is because it's not new people. It's just farms, right? People are just porting in their farms after KVK. Uh, and so I don't care about every governor that transfers in, um, but if it's a new player they're over 25 million power then you know i think we should get a message because it's a nice warm welcome to say hey everybody knows you're here now and they're gonna say hi to you the next one says we added an opponent troops choice function to the expedition system governors can tap the enemy portrait list on the left side of the screen to choose your enemy's troops so this just makes expedition easier because you can just counter them like you can just pick the troops that you counter easily like you could give the genghis khan like archers i guess this just makes up expedition easier i don't know next is we oh my god if you guys if you guys heard that i didn't fart i'm actually i'm just it's just my hand on my chair i promise i'm not farting this says we reworked the triggering mechanism of guan yu's expertise skill lone rider now guan yu will deal increased damage for three seconds whenever he gains a shield so the text here already reflects this so i don't know if they like already changed guan yu like I, it was my understanding that everything in this list was coming in two weeks but this says when he gains a shield it increases skill damage by 15 percent for three seconds so i guess maybe they already changed guan yu or maybe they just changed the text to reflect it so that way players know in advance and then they'll change it i don't even remember what it was before next it says we increase the attack range of william the first hidden bloodline skill that is good i'm glad to see that and yeah william is a good commander so this just makes him even better and 18 says in order to ensure account safety for all governors after the update all governors using android ios emulators to play will need to log in on their mobile devices if they want to create a new character this is good this is probably a way to combat bots right because they're probably banning tons of bots every single day and they are the players who run the bots are probably just creating new ones at a massive scale using multi-instanced emulators right so this makes a lot of sense i'm really excited to see this however i don't know like the emulators probably can just figure out a way to go around i don't know i don't know how they're gonna know i'm not involved in any of that stuff but that's cool if it, it cuts down on bots i'm happy about it anyway guys i'm excited for this update i want you guys to comment down below what are you most excited for coming from this update are you excited to see the new kvk are you excited for the uh updates to the events are you excited to be able to exchange your useless items tell me in the comment section below i love these new updates as always if you made it all the way to the end of the video hopefully you guys will drop a thumbs up on the video subscribe to the channel if you're new around here here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video all of those things help out the channel a ton i'm i'm serious they really do so guys make sure you go ahead and do it all my social media links are going to be in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter discord and twitch where i do live stream rise of kingdoms and finally there's a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks and it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms you're going to experience fewer crashes than if you're playing on an older phone and like i said it's absolutely free so why don't you go ahead click the link in the description and give it a try with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni we'll talk to you guys again soon 
Peace.